Good morning everyone, welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers update, a day late today on the 9th of November 2013. The reason we're a day late today is because we've had Typhoon Yolanda, one of the strongest ever cyclones to have hit the coast, hit the Philippines yesterday morning in Queensland time. We haven't been able to update you from the Australian cyclone outlook because that has been taking up a lot of our time. Anyway, we will get into the Australian outlook now and we will touch on Typhoon Yolanda and what it will do uh, over the next couple of days at the end of this broadcast. As we take a look around Australia, thanks to Weather Zone satellite imagery, uh, we can see very little in the way of convective activity off the continent, so in the ocean areas around Australia, and therefore we're not expecting any type of tropical development, at least for a week or two. Probably not at all in November at this stage, based on the way the MJO is operating. However, remember the MJO is only one factor when we look at the long-term uh, long potential of cyclone development. Anyway, over Australia, it's over the northern parts of Australia, it's been very benign, it's been very quiet. However, that's all about to change. We're going to see a lot more thunderstorm activity here in the north and northwest. We're going to see a lot more thunderstorm activity now pushing through into southeast and central Queensland, maybe even into north Queensland. We'll see a few more thunderstorms developing over the Gulf Country as well. So we are about to see a build-up period over the next uh, four to five days at least, possibly longer, depending on how much moisture can linger and how the other how other features like surface troughing uh, will operate over the next over the extended period. As we head uh, east towards the Coral Sea, uh, we've really got very little happening there as well. What we did have was a lot of shower and storm activity over here near the Solomons, uh, but that seemed to die off. Now that was all due to an upper level trough which sort of sat in through here, went through Fiji uh, and went south into New Zealand. Uh, so that seemed to seems to have moved on. We've still got a lot of wind shear. You can see, you can see right here actually all that cloud is getting whisked off to the southeast and, and look that's pretty typical this time of year we don't expect any cyclone activity this time of year purely and simply because the upper level winds up here are too strong they're just going to whisk everything away everything that tries to develop over one spot is just going to be pushed out to the southeast and that's what's happening so really no chance of development around Australia over the next couple of weeks Looking at the weather zone synoptic chart, we can see really the, there's a jet stream pushing in through here and there's another a jet streak sort of thing up here. And so all of that is going to mean that there's absolutely not a chance in hell of anything forming anywhere in this area over the next uh, two weeks. And it really it's too dry off the coast of WA at this stage. There's no real moisture feeding in from the northwest in the mid-levels. So we're not going to see any development out here for at least a week to two weeks. And look, the modelling's pretty clear on this. And it's not really suggesting any type of development here until early December. So it look, looks like a very quiet pattern off the coast on shore though you know, on the land as I say this this trough system here that you can see lagging back in through the northern half of Australia it is going to create a lot of shower and storm activity over the next few days and if we look at the Bureau of Meteorology's uh, forecast for rainfall over the next four to eight days so over the next four days, remember where that trough system lay the, the trough system sort of lay in through this region here and really we're seeing anywhere to the east of that trough system is going to see shower and storm activity ex ex especially in this area being enhanced by northwesterly uh, and northeasterly winds uh, at the surface bringing in a fair bit of moisture at the surface uh, so that moisture gets in gets uplifted and we have shower and storm activity that develops in here pushes out towards the coast um, either towards the uh, towards the coast here in the territory or towards the coast in the in the north Kimberley uh, unfortunately that moisture doesn't penetrate any further to the uh, western south here in Western Australia and there does seem to be a little bit of a lack of moisture here over Queensland over the northern parts of Queensland uh, once we get out of the Gulf Country um, and there's not enough uplift in this area to create too many thunderstorms say in between sort of Cooktown and and south of Townsville probably even as far as uh, Bow and Mackay area so really our hot spots for, for thunderstorm activity are the north Kimberley uh, and the uh, northwest top end and also southeast Queensland, southern Queensland and even central inland Queensland will see a lot of storm activity over the next four days. 
In the next four days after that, we do start to see a bit of moisture penetration back into the uh, Pilbara, and we do start to see some very good storm activity developing or expected to develop in the Pilbara and the West Kimberley as well. So we're going to see a big increase here over the northwest parts of the country in thunderstorm activity. We're going to see a little bit of a lull happening in the uh, north northern parts of the Northern Territory. Uh, northeastern parts of the Territory might start to see some storm activity in the next uh, in the four to eight day period. And finally, we start to get a bit of moisture penetration here. So we might actually see some thunderstorm activity after Tuesday or Wednesday over the northern parts of Queensland. And still, the southeast and central parts of Queensland are looking very very, very active storm-wise. So don't be surprised to have a multiple day storm outbreak in this area. Um, not, not, it's not usually uh, common here. Normally we get these trough systems that will, will push in this direction and push pretty quickly and you'll get one or two days of storms and then it's all over. This is now suggesting, all the models that we're looking at are suggesting a multi-day storm outbreak over here. And interestingly, we're starting to see some more storm activity over the Northern Peninsula. Uh, so that's very, uh, very good for them too. A little bit of work, a little bit of stuff in the Coral Sea too. But once again, remember there's so much wind shear pushing that out to the southeast. There's absolutely no chance of actual uh, cyclone development or tropical low development to, uh, to occur in this area. Looking at the global hazards outlook, uh, obviously we're seeing this week, this is from the 6th to the 12th of November, this week we're obviously been seeing that uh, terrible typhoon activity over the Philippines. Uh, it is expected to be fairly dry and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing some fairly dry conditions here over the Solomons now that that upper trough has moved on um, and this region here expected to be fairly uh, quiet. Uh, and over the next uh, week, so November 13 to November 19, as we get to mid-November, we'll start to see a bit more activity activity hitting Indonesia uh, and PNG because as, as we mentioned in our last update PNG has been very quiet storm act, storm wise so we will start to see a little bit more of activity happening there we'll start to see more activity in the central parts of the Indian Ocean whether that be the north north or, or just south of the equator um, and there is some modelling suggesting a tropical cyclone or tropical low towards the end of the month out here uh, and pushing further away from Australia, so nowhere near Australia. Uh, and if we look at the MJO and the progression of the MJO, look, there's sorry, before we do that, there's no clear indication over, over northern Australia, but as I said to you, at, at the uh, over the next eight days, we're going to see a lot of storm activity developing over the northern half of the continent. So uh, it's very... Um, very pleasing to see and some of that storm activity will result in some fairly widespread uh, 15 to 50 millimeter falls so and that's um, that's very uh, very comforting news for people who have been waiting a long time for some rain the latest MJO forecast, this is the uh, what we're looking for mostly here is this green squiggly line and we want that green squiggly line to be over phases 4, 5 and 6 around about mid-December, mid to late December because that will herald or hopefully herald the onset of a monsoon trough. Uh, at this stage it's all looking like it's it's going to plan however there's a huge area, a huge sorry error margin uh, between by the 9th of November between the outliers that are suggesting a very strong MJO to the outliers that are suggesting there will be no MJO. Um, now the MJO is basically a westerly wind burst and what it does is it helps to bring in a lot of moisture uh, from uh, from the tropical regions into uh, from, from the tropical ocean sorry into uh, the northern half of Australia and the northern half of, uh, of the basically the maritime continent in here and so what that will do is it'll increase the mid-level moisture it'll allow more thunderstorm activity to develop um, and if we do have a decent high down south it will uh, result in a little bit more convergence and so we'll start to see a, a more shower and storm and even rain activity as it pushes into phases four five and six when it gets here into late phase three we start to see a little bit of an increase in uh, potential for cyclone activity off WA and that continues through phase four then when it gets into mid phase four and into to phase five these are the phases here um, and when it gets into these areas we start to see more more of a general uh, increase in potential of cyclone activity over northern Australia and as, as it gets into phase five and six we start to see an increase in potential of cyclone activity in the Coral Sea and so based on that projection now if we follow and, and believe that the green squiggly line which is the ensemble mean is going to be somewhat accurate uh, we would suggest that we start to see an increase in potential for cyclone activity in Australia 
Australia in er, uh, in sorry around about mid December will be the time where we start to look for uh, signs of cyclone activity based on the broad scale pattern. But remember, these outliers here and these outliers here uh, are really don't fill us with confidence that this forecast is very accurate. All right, folks. Well, this is the one that's destroyed uh, a lot of uh, central Philippines, and it's gone straight through the central parts of the Philippines. You can see here it's sort of taken the the path of least resistance. Uh, it's taken a lot of uh, warm water, so it hasn't really weakened out much. It's still a Category Four uh, on our scale, uh, getting close to a five. It might actually intensify just slightly between now and this afternoon, this evening, uh, before starting to weaken as it approaches the coastline of Vietnam. Uh, so this is Typhoon. Typhoon Yolanda we're talking about. I'm sorry for those of you that don't, that don't know and haven't been following. Um, so it's going to hit uh, central northern Vietnam uh, around about that Hue area and we're going to see uh, winds at probably close to category 3 uh, Australian standards as it, as it hits the coast. The water temperatures out here are a little bit lower, there's a little bit more dry air trying to wrap itself around but because the system's moving so quickly uh, it's going to have limited potential to be, to be weakened by those factors. See normally when we have dry air and when we have uh, cold sea surface temperatures or, or cooler sea surface temperatures, uh, a uh, cyclone will start to die pretty rapidly, but because it's moving just so fast, um, and, and look, that's one that's the one saving grace for the Philippines, it was moving so fast, it didn't have enough time to, to cause the type of, particularly the flooding rains that, that the Philippines often experience, um, as well as those winds, those extreme winds were only with a particular area for a few hours uh, before they moved on, uh, and I think that's the saving grace with this system. So, uh, you know, there, there is a silver lining with the system because it's been moving so fast. Anyway, Category 3 possibly uh, at this stage as it hits the coast. Uh, category 4 maybe if it doesn't weaken as much as forecast. But uh, Category 3 would be a fairly safe bet um, on, the, on the coast here, which is still a significant system. It's a severe system on the Aussie scale. And just to let you know the time frame here, we're expecting landfall around about lunchtime to uh, late afternoon tomorrow over the Vietnam area. And then it'll just push uh, northwards as a rain depression, so it might give a fair bit of rain here. But once again, because it's moving so fast, uh, probably not going to give that much rain either. So uh, look at this stage, Category 3 on impact late tomorrow uh, afternoon. And hello, we got a new little one here. Tropical cyclone hasn't been named yet. Uh, it likely to hit Somalia, believe it or not. Somalia doesn't get hit all that often. Um, and when it does, they're usually fairly weak because if you look at the um, latitude here between sort of uh, the country lies in, in a very low la latitude. And uh, this area, because of the amount of dry air coming off the continent, um, doesn't really have uh, very favorable conditions for tropical cyclone development for that long a period. So, but even so, we're expecting a Category 1 tropical cyclone to hit Somalia sometime between tomorrow afternoon and uh, Monday morning uh, expected to hit the coast and not moving anywhere near as fast as the, uh, as, the other, uh, as the other cyclones so this one might give a little bit of rain to the area but as I say very interesting because Somalia doesn't get hit all that often. Folks, that's all for today. Uh, however, we are now looking for uh, sponsorship for this season and, and partners for advertising. Uh, and so if you think you know a business or your business might be interested in helping us do what we do um, in uh, for obviously uh, some sponsorship on our website, uh, through our videos that you're watching now, um, through our chases, those sort of things. We do have a very large target audience uh, over the summer, so we do have a fair bit to offer to potential advertisers. So if you if you are interested or you think you know of a business that might be, please let us know via private message. Uh, those businesses can help us uh, get into these things and do some uh, very interesting things documentary wise uh, and also um, uh, data wise because at the, this year, and we'll talk about this a bit more as to what we're planning on doing inside them um, in another video, but uh, suffice to say that we are planning on some interesting data collection this, this season. Anyway folks, if you do know of anyone, uh, please uh, let us know. All right, so enjoy the stormy weather if you live in northern Australia over the next uh, over the next week, and we'll talk to you again on Tuesday evening to see how those storms are going. Good uh, goodbye.